All right, guys, let's go over occlusal guards um, using the new Remexis guide module. In this lecture, we're going to go over how to fabricate the guard um, using the guide module and then how to export that and then import it into Mesh Mixer to do some uh, post export editing. And then finally, uh, a little bit on 3D printing. Um, all right, so the, the first step is you, you have to have a CBCT or DICOM data loaded. It doesn't necessarily have to even be the patients who, uh, who, who's your, who you're working on. It could be any patient really, but in this instance, I do have a CBCT of the patient. Um, but, but you need to merge it. And, and so like, let's say you didn't have DICOM data for the patient you were doing the guard on. You would just kind of merge it inaccurately to any uh, maxillary arch. But in this instance, we're gonna go ahead and pick points and the accuracy here is really not that important because we're not using the underlying DICOM data for anything really because we're not placing implants or anything like that. So we're just picking some points and it's going to get import that and merge that with that data set. What it will do after three points, you'll see the overlay and then you can pick additional points and then it will color code it um, where green is a really good match and you know, reds and oranges, not so much. And here we could see that the, the STL file from an intraoral scan has been imported. Now we're gonna load the mandibular using existing match from the Emerald scanner. This was taken in centric relation at a slightly open bite. And, and you notice that it's just importing it in at that kept orientation. So then you open the guide module and you're going to set your path of insertion for the occlusal guard manually and it will highlight severe undercuts as uh, red and then you're going to draw the, the guide area you just circumscribe a little bit past where you want the guide to go and then you could set your thickness in this instance i wanted one and a half millimeters and then you preview guide and it's going to render that over the model and it is anatomical now now what you need to do is just simply remove um, excess material using the remove material and you right click and drag to alter the size of that eraser and you want to get it to just where it's just meeting the undercut area on the facials now <clears throat> you have to be careful because it will go off to the other side in this instance if you take a look I've, I'm doing this right side but if you look now and you rotate the model I erased accidentally the contralateral side <clears throat> so you want to be careful that hit undo and make sure that you orientate the model in such a way that you're not going to be erasing extrapolated data behind uh, what you really intend to erase. And we're almost done um, with the, the, the guide part here. We're just smoothing up and then I'm gonna check out the linguals and make sure that I'm not in any severe undercuts. And, and once again, it's just the erase tool, right click to alter the size of the eraser right click and drag and then I'm just going to carefully remove a little bit down there on the palette and there we go pretty much we're done we're going to export this now so you're going to go down to the the create guide button on the bottom right there of the module you could add text if you want but in this instance we didn't need to and it's going to re-import that back onto the DICOM data I'm going to make it plan mecha pink here. If that's not hot, I don't know what's hot. That's awesome. So the easy part's over. Really, really easy here, guys. Now, this is the tricky part. You have to go into jaw motion. Don't freak out if you don't have this module. They're going to allow you to export everything from the Explorer window in the future. But in the meantime, you go to jaw motion and you are able to export everything as rendered and in the proper STL orientations. So now you go into Mesh Mixer and you will import those STL files that you just exported. And you will append the, the new files to one another. So there should be three files, maxillary mandibular and then the guide. And then hit no when it says the files are positioned away because it really doesn't know what it's talking about. This guide technique was from Dr. Gutter. 
that is uh, kind of a loose adaptation of what he does. And so here we have it imported. Um, the byte is, is, everything comes in as it was imported into Remexis. So now what you need to do is you need to alter the mandibular model in such a way that the, the guide, when it fits down to it, won't be convex into the central fossas because we don't want to lock the patient in. So all you do is you select, hit the select icon, and you're going to highlight the central groove area and then about three-fourths up the inclined planes of the transverse ridges of the cusps. Just avoiding essentially the cusp tips. You can do that on the contralateral side as well. Kind of real quick here. Okay. Once you have that highlighted, you're going to erase and fill in. And what it's going to do is going to create kind of straight lines between the high points of that area. Now control click to erase, like if you felt like you selected too far up the transverse bridge, you could hit hold control and click. But now you're gonna to go to erase and fill. And you have several options when you erase and fill. I, I like to use um, the more simple rendering. I don't like the smooth kind of convex, and you could alter how convex it is in con concave. I like the flat minimal or flat remeshed better. And it's just gonna create almost straight lines um, between the high points. So that's basically what I have here. And I'm going to probably go ahead and accept that and we can smooth it later. But before you section this out, you're going to want to select now the cusp tips. Because remember, you're going to eventually indent the occlusal guard with whatever is selected here. And so you do want to be careful not to go over onto the facial and lingual surfaces too much because you don't want to lock the patient in, depending on your philosophy. Um, some people don't, it doesn't matter, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. But here I'm just trying to get it to where the cusp tips will indent into the guard ever so slightly. And then same thing with the incisal edges of the anteriors, avoiding the facial surfaces here. So I'm just going to go and highlight the very incisal edge with a slight lingual bias. And then I'll rotate onto the facial and make sure control click and hold to remove a lot of the data that wrapped over onto the facial because you don't want to, or I don't want to constrict the, um, lock the patient in. I want them to have freedom of movement. And so the indentations that I want, I want it to be subtle. I'm just filling in now with still using the same tool, the select tool. Now in real time, this takes maybe like a minute, but when I'm going slow to try to show you guys, it takes a little bit longer. In fact, the whole process is about a 10 minute process. Okay, so now you're gonna extract all that by hitting Y and it'll create almost a separate model a separate STL file. And at this point, you don't really need the lower anymore, so I'll probably go ahead and delete that. But before I do, I'm gonna smooth the, the new render that we just created um, using probably Robust Smooth. And um, you have to be careful with this because you don't wanna distort and deform the cusp tips, which are the most important parts. You're really just trying to even out the valley, the central groove area. Um, very carefully so you're just going to and I like to do it this way because I have more control over what I'm doing here and you're not going to touch the anteriors you're just going to leave those be and you have to envision a negative of this on the guard so because in a minute we're going to kind of suck down to that occlusal guard and and that's kind of why you want a flat surface you don't want any anything that's going to interfere with the patient's occlusion on that 
do not touch the cuss tips though. All right, so now what you're going to do <clears throat> is you're going to, um, I'm gonna remove or decrease the visibility of the other models and I'm gonna turn on the, the guard. And so we can see we have space between the guard and the posing. And what we need to do now is basically fill in that space. And there's kind of an easy way to do it. You just, before, before you start to fill in the space, you want to make sure you don't have any areas poking through. Um, this sometimes happens when you have a one and a half millimeter thick guard from the uh, STL export. So I'm just gonna, you could use shrink smooth or flatten or um, the drag plus tool and just melt away the little cuss tips poking through before we start to equalize these. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the little magnet icon um, on the STL partition that you created and it's gonna turn it this kind of purple blue color and you're going to go to your brushes tool, uh, your, your sculpt tool, and you're gonna select the brush icon that has the little magnet icon uh, tracked. And it's really cool. What it's essentially gonna do is it's going to um, suck the guard down to that occlusal surface. Make sure volumetric is not selected. Um, it'll destroy the intaglio of your guard, it won't fit. And what you're going to do is you're going to, I put it to a pretty decent size. You're just going to click. You'll see it's, it's morphing the occlusal guard to mesh with um, that surface that you created from the STL extract of the lower occlusal surface table. It's really quick. You don't have to be too OCD here. And there we go. Um, now what you'll see when I remove it, I'm gonna change the color so you could see a little bit better. The shiny, let me take off the, um, see the shiny surface, the shiny flat surface, perfectly intermeshing with the mandibular occlusal table. You could stop here and then use a hand piece to smooth everything out, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use Robust Smooth. Make sure volumetric is unselected. Once again, so you don't want it to go through. You're just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly round off. Being real careful not to mess with the divots too much um, that was created from the custom table that we just generated. And I'm just gonna quickly smooth everything out. Um, you don't have to do this step, but I think it makes it nicer. And you could reimpose the occlusal table back on to check to make sure that your smooth didn't create too many high spots. And if it did, you just use the, the drag tool or one of your favorite tools to kind of just click and remove those heavy spots. Alternatively, you could do it with a handpiece um, after you try it in. Now for me, I like to make um, cuspid ramps. So um, let me just smooth this little divot real quick. I don't like, that looks like it's gonna lock the patient in here. Okay, so uh, for me, like I said, I like custom cuspid ramps to be pretty high uh, for posterior disclusion. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of material in that area um, using, using the draw two. Now, make sure you unselect volumetric because if you look here, I forgot. And now I'm gonna go back, hit control Z and do it again because it would have distorted the inside of the intaglio of the guard. I'm just adding material here and I'm gonna smooth that out and that's gonna give me something to customize um, in the mouth. That's it guys, guard's done. I'm gonna export that file as a STL and load it into whatever your favorite printing software is and easy peasy, all done.